One of my favorite sports movies of all time is Invincible. And I'm lucky to have Vince Papala here today. Vince, how you doing? Doing great, Joseph. Thanks. One of my favorite sports movies, too, if not my favorite. Of course, you put Rocky way up there. Rocky's, uh, Rocky's like a Mount Rushmore, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm sort of happy to be in the top 10 right now. Well, you know what? I said my favorite sports movie is one of my favorite sports movies, but actually Rocky, my wife picks on me. Rocky Four is actually one of my favorite movies right up there with The Godfather 1 and 2. So I guess we're not here to talk about Rocky. We're going to talk about you. Uh, I finished watching your movie last night just to catch up on it. And a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to uh, Jim the Ricky Moritz. Right. And I made the big mistake of not, not kind of doing my research a little bit because, you know, Disney wouldn't lie to us. So, but on this interview, I came more prepared. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do my research on this guy. And yeah, Disney don't lie. They just stretch the truth. That's all. <laughs> well, you know, before the interview with Jim, uh, you know, I looked up a couple of things and then it was like, really? Wait, what? This, because I, you know, during the interview, I wanted to talk about his wife because me and my wife oh. are in love with the wife in the movie. Oh. And, and then about 20 minutes before I got online with him, I was like, Oh, that didn't happen. So, and there's a lot of stuff that I learned about you. So let's get started. Let's start off in 1975. The Eagles went four and ten. You were a fan, but in 1975, you wasn't just a, a substitute teacher. Matter of fact, you was a real teacher, and you were in a minor league football league. What was life like in the minor leagues of football? Well, that's pretty, yeah, that was pretty crazy, actually. Uh, I was at that, yeah, 75, I, it was the World Football League, and that was a league that was um, the Spring League, and uh, let's see, uh, Larry Zonka, Jim Kick, um, uh, and, and uh, it's uh, Paul, Paul Warfield from the, um, from, the, from, the Dolph, from the Dolphins defected over to this league. So at that time, um, I was in, in 75, I was in the second year of that league. Actually, the league folded after four games. And at that, at, so when I got the opportunity to have to try out with the Eagles, Joe, um, I went back to my alma mater where I was a full-time school teacher and uh, the head track coach, assistant football coach. And I started substitute teaching there and bartending and actually working as a doorman at a bar at, at, a, at a nightclub in Philadelphia. And ironically, the guy that I was a doorman with was trying out for the Eagles and I I had just come off, and I said, I'm going to get a shot with the Eagles. I'm going to get a shot with the Eagles. He started laughing at me. And here it turned out that he became my best friend, and we just recently wrote a book. He, he lives down south down there somewhere in Cornelius, North Carolina, right on the river, right on the lake, you know. So he's doing pretty good. But, yeah, so that, that's what it was. And life, life, was, um, life was okay in that lake. You know, I was, getting, I, was, I was getting paid X amount of dollars, whatever. It was, I was playing pro ball, you know. I was living my dream. Uh, I wanted to actually, my, 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 my real dream was to play for the Philadelphia Eagles, but heck, at that point, I was 28, 29 years old, and I didn't play college football. I was a track guy, a decathlete, and uh, that didn't quite go the way I, the way I had planned. Uh, you know, some, some doors were slammed in my face, so you can do one or two things, Joe, you know, that when things went, and, and Jim Morris will tell you the same thing, I'm sure he did, Mike Ruzioni, all those, they're all Disney movies. Uh, done basically by the same guys that did our movies, so they had that same genre. And you know, you, when, when a door gets slammed in your face, you're going to do one or two things. You're going to quit, you're going to get your ass back up, and you're going to get back in the game because you can't live your dream on the sideline, you know? I mean, you got to get into the game somehow. So hey. I figured, all right, well, I'll get in the game. What's that? No, so go ahead. I, got in, I got into the game, and then the game was uh, Dick Vermeer came into Philadelphia with a. Uh, an opportunity to try out, and I was in great condition. And um, I ran that forty-yard dash. The grass was about ankle high. Actually, I was—I interviewed yesterday with a guy Ray Dedinger, who knew me from back then. And I ran a four-five, and he said, "Man, he said in, in today's turf that would have been a four-three-five." So I was pretty quick back then, and I caught the eye of Coach Romeo with my speed. He didn't know I played world football. He didn't know anything about me. I was just a six-two guy that could run like to win. And then he put us in, a, in, a, in like a seven-on-seven seven drill. 
And, um, and that was just like the Rough Touch Leagues when I was playing it. You saw in the movie, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a piece of cake. And I just relaxed. I took a couple of deep breaths. I said, this is, this is nothing. And uh, I, I caught everything that was thrown at me. Uh, I, I caught a few bombs. And, and uh, next thing you know, uh, the, the, the tryout basically was over. And I had no idea. I thought, okay, well, at least I gave it my best shot. And then I get a tap on the back. And the trainer gets me. He says, go on up. to The coach wants to see you up. General manager wants to see you upstairs. And the upstairs is the, uh, is the corporate offices for the Philadelphia Eagles at then Veteran Stadium. And I go upstairs, and I walk past Coach Romeo. I said, that was a great workout, Vince. Nice job. And he gave me a big wave and a smile, and whoa. And then I walked into uh, the general manager's office, and they offered me $22,000 contract to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, I signed right on the spot. Didn't hesitate. And then, and then that day, that enabled me, because I was their property, Joseph, uh, that enabled me to have the opportunity to train at Veteran Stadium. So I started training. Uh, with Roman Gabriel and Mike Schmidt from the Phillies, uh, Steve Carlton from the Phillies. We had the, basically, we shared the same, uh, the same side of the stadium and our locker rooms were right next to each other. We had doors that went in and out. And I started working with them and I got a, a Kung Fu guy that worked with me. And then that guy, Dennis Franks, the doorman, he's there training too. And, uh, and then we started training together and, and, and there it is. And then I wound up making the team, you know, and, but the movie, the movie made it look like uh, my my skills were diminishing. Uh, but that was mostly because of uh, that was mostly because of uh, drama, and, and uh, intensity and and some humor. Uh, in reality, I was reminded yesterday that I actually led the team in receptions and touchdowns in that in that six game preseason. So I'd have been pretty pissed off if if I didn't make the team. But I made it. And uh, as they say, the, the the rest is history. Next year, captain of the team. Third year. Uh, we wind up in the playoffs playing against uh, the Atlanta Falcons in the um, in a uh, wild card game, and then the, the fourth year we're into the NFC Championship game with Tampa, and then the fifth year with Dick Vermeil. I'm out now. I blew out both my shoulders, and in the fifth year we wound up in the Super Bowl with the Oakland Raiders. So, and that was the plan that Dick Vermeil had, and I was I was really honored and and happy to be a part of that. I got I got three years active, and I got fourth fourth year credit because I blew this shoulder out with a a separation. I separated this one. And then my first preseason game back, I re-entered that. So I stayed, stayed in the game and I, I wound up dislocating this one being a knucklehead. And, uh, and I got this, I got, I, I, I wound up on the injured reserve for the season. This is the alumni ring. It was given to me by my son and made my, by my wife and daughter for a birthday that ends in, in zero that I'd rather forget. And not the gift, but the birthday. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I got this ring, but yeah, I have I have great memories. I look, I have this, and and this is what I have that nobody else has. Nobody else has on those two teams, right there, baby. See that? I have that. I have this. They don't have that. So I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that all day long, man. Because uh, you know Disney, <laughs> Walt Disney. You kidding me? That's sick. So so Dick Vermeer, he didn't meet you at your car, like in trade in the movie. No, no, he didn't. It, but that was a that was a pretty cool scene. I really liked how they did that scene. It was it was really wild, and they actually shot it in the parking lot, right, right where they have a whole bunch of cars that are parked. Usually, that are coming in off the boats, right off the river, and um, and so the, the, what what happened in reality? But it was great. He's he says, you know how you know what your forty was, Vince. And, you know, it's a lot faster than that car of yours, right? That 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 conversation really did happen, and it happened in the elevator at Veteran Stadium after the workout was over. we The workout was at a, at, a, at, a, at a field that was about a quarter mile away. If you know the Philly Sports Complex, which is, one, one I'm telling you, one of the best by far with all the new stadiums up there. And even back then, we had we had three great stadiums. And um, one was, of course, the Sixers and Flyers, and then the other was the Eagles and, and the Phillies. But the Eagles and Phillies were in one. Now they're separate. Anyway, they had this one field, which was a municipal field, where they had the Army Navy game, JFK Stadium. They had the they used to have the, the thrill show for the for the fire and police, and and they 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 had stock car races there, and that's where that tryout was. And uh, and then so we went all the way back over to Veteran Stadium, about a quarter mile away, and I'm in the elevator, and Coach Ramil he pops in, hey Vince, that was a great 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 job. You know, you ran a four or five, and then he asked me he asked me why why don't you play your college ball. And I, I didn't play college football, and I said, so I just, I, I just Temple, you know, Temple was one of the, the 
football teams in Philly, and it's the same color as your hat there. And uh, and, and then he says, "How old are you?" And I was thirty, man. And, and, and but I didn't look thirty, and I didn't run like I was thirty. I told him, "Hey, I'm 26, right?" And uh, he says, "Well, that you say you did a great job." He said, "Congratulations," and that was it. And, uh, and and the next thing you know, 15 minutes later, I'm walking past him in his office. He smiles and waves at me, and I become a Philadelphia freaking eagle. Almost <laughs> had to make the team there. <laughs> so it, it's funny because one thing you brought up, Jim, uh, is one thing that he brought up in his new book something called Dream Killers. And it's the scene in the movie where you're sitting at the bar and you're talking to Mark Wahlberg who play, played you and portrayed you in the movie. Uh, right. uh, you're sitting there at a bar and one of your buddies looked at you and says something to the effect of, you know, you're never going to be anything. Why try? Uh, did you have a lot of that during that time? Yeah. Did you I have had the people tell you it? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I talk about that in my speech all the time. I call it the bucket of crabs. You know, they're they're the dream killers. They're the naysayers. They're the doubters. They're the people that want to start there. That's the peer pressure the kids get uh, when, when they want to do something that's a little bit different or they don't want to they don't want to be part of that crowd, you know, and, uh, and and I call it the bucket of crabs. And if you can imagine a bucket of crabs and you're that top crab on that crab and you try and somebody tries to pull you off that. All the other crabs are going to try to grab you and bring you back in, you know. And and if you saw like Toy Story, the guy falls into that whatever, you know, and 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 he's trying to eventually get away from uh, he's trying to get away from all the things that he's in there, and they're all trying to pull him back in. That's the bucket of crabs. So they're telling me they're telling me, Joe, you don't have the right skills. You don't have you're you know you're a track guy. You're too old. You didn't play college football. Blah blah blah. blah. You know you don't have the right resume. You don't have the right pedigree. And uh, and that one guy. Believe it or not, was my biggest advocate back then, and we were season ticket holders together. Believe it or not, with a couple of other guys that you saw in the movie. I, those guys were real men, real guys. But that one guy um, that, that that said that you know you'll never be nothing, nothing, and uh, typical Philly. Uh, he for some reason after my rookie year, um, I took I, I took all my guys out. I, I, all my guys from the neighborhood. I wanted to, I, I took them to a Phillies game. And then afterwards to a, to a little Italian restaurant in South Philadelphia called Cousins Little Italy. And, and a bunch of fans made a big deal of it. And I ste- I walked over because I was the guy in Philadelphia at that time, especially in Rocky land. You know, I mean, this is all now Rocky's coming out and, you know, all those comparisons. I'm the real life Rocky, all this going on. And this guy got pissed off and I never heard from him again. And uh, but so when I told that story to the screenwriter, he wrote him in. As, as that character then, but when I was trying out for the team, he, he was right there with the big guys. You know, he was he was with me a thousand percent. But, but you know, all my guys, I'm, I'm still I hang with them all the time. We, we're always together and and doing fun things together. It's a pretty fun. It, it's it's great. Philly's a tight tight town, small communities, and uh, really love their sports guys. And me being a local guy, uh, they've adopted me as 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 basically a, a one of their one of their own. Now in the movie, your wife leaves you. Shannon, yeah. You, uh, after all this happened, you think uh, you think she kind of regretted leaving you? Well, I think so because she called me after I made the team. But uh, that that was the shortest phone call in history. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I you know sent me the letter. Hey, but that's okay. Uh, that that's all right because uh, it, it maybe it, it, it maybe was an incentive to do whatever. But at that time, uh, I was actually uh, teaching at my alma mater. Uh, which was suburban Philadelphia. I was a head track coach, assistant football coach, working on my master's degree and trying out to for the Olympic trials in a decathlon. So the, all these things are happening. And, and then that happened. And also I was playing in those rough touch legs that we portrayed in the movie. So it just, if all that stuff happens, you know, and, and then I come home after coaching a football game. I didn't come home after playing a game. They changed that around a little bit. But again, you know, they didn't it didn't really mean much. It just it, it sort of played in the way they wanted to portray it, make the journey look. And they did a good job doing it. I say they, the screenwriter in Disney. And um, but when I came home, uh, the, the place was it was I was I was wiped out. I was cleaned out and, and I flipped. Absolutely flipped. It's just like it showed it. I, you know, we, Janet and I tried to buy that house. It's on Sears Street in Philadelphia. We couldn't buy it. It's one of these little row homes. So we, we couldn't get it just, just for memorabilia's sake. But um, anyway, so, so uh, you know, so I, that, 
that's who I went on, and 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 then finally, I'm I'm, I'm what I call myself a free agent. Uh, there was nobody special in my life going up to that point. And then, then when I made the Eagles, I actually met uh, the, the, my my wife of of 27 years in a couple of weeks. It will be 27 years. We didn't start dating then, but in the movie, uh, it, it it never said that. And it was Janet, the bartender, the uh, Giants fan, who in reality is. So I don't, I don't know. Is that your next question? No, I, I know you got married a second time. Am I correct? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had too many hits to the head. Yeah, I got married when I was playing. Uh, you know, in between, that was that was like the tweener, and then uh, and but I had no children, you know. And then once we get once again, I became a free agent. And who who do I meet? I re met right before the Barcelona games. I re meet Janet, you know, the one that portrayed in the movie. And here it turns out that she's she's world class gymnast. She was on that that, that Olympic team. Uh, that went to Munich, although she was injured, she didn't go there, she did the World Games, but she's world-renowned in gymnastics and uh, coached at the University of Pennsylvania, and man, I fell in love, I just fell head over heels with her, and we got married in uh, 93, and we had we had my baby Gabrielle on New Year's Eve in 93, and my son Vinny uh, a couple of years later, and as they say, you know, you got a vow to end your name, you got a, I got a boy and a girl, you know, we got the rich man family, so. Well, for the record, Janet has never been and will never be a Giants fan. That is correct, but she does. She, she has she has the blue in her background because she's she's a Penn Stater, as she says. We are Penn State. Actually, she went. Uh, she blew her knee out. Went to Penn State and couldn't couldn't compete in gymnastics. Now, imagine she's she's doing all this stuff around the world when she's a teenager, and then uh, she winds up um, she, she winds up at Penn State with a blown out knee and and, and couldn't compete. So. And gymnastics, so she started diving, and she wound up setting off Penn, uh, Penn State's diving records. She was an extraordinary athlete and a great, great coach, and uh, an absolute phenomenal mom too. And it's the best way. She's my bud, man. We do, we have, we have, we have fun together. You got two coaches, two jocks. Our house is like a locker room. I mean, it's it, it's cool. We, you know, we're all about sports. We're all about working together for each other. You know, and it, it's a lot of fun in our house. There's a lot of energy in the Papawa house. I gotta ask you, uh, you know, Elizabeth Banks played uh, Janet. Yeah, she's great. Uh, man. Uh, yeah, Mark. Oh, oh gosh, you. Mm. I, I gotta watch what I say. Oh, but uh, Elizabeth Banks. I mean, she's something serious. But uh, Mark uh, Wahlberg plays you. Did you? Right. Was he your first choice to play you, or did you? Did you even have a choice? I didn't have a choice. No, I, I was thinking maybe it would be uh, Hugh Jackman or, you know, everybody in the neighborhood was saying be Danny DeVito, you know, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. But I, I, I didn't I didn't really care. I just wanted somebody who was an athlete who was going to play the role the way it should have been played. And first time I met Mark, I met him in New York. And uh, right after he just got done shooting, the departed four brothers had just um, had just uh, finished up. And, uh, and and so he threw a big party up in New York uh, to introduce me to all his friends. So he invited all the cast from Friday Night Lights, all the cast from the Four Brothers. He invited me to his real guys, you know, uh, that, that he hung out with. And there was, and Lindsay Lohan was there. Uh, Giselle was there. She and Leonardo had just broken up. So there's this big party. And here comes Mark Wahlberg in with his Boston stuff on. And he says, man, I'm going to play you with, with, with enthusiasm and passion. I'm going to make you proud of me. And and he says I and I got and I and I feel pressure because I know you're going to be on the set and I want to I, I want to please you just like he did with Marcus Luttrell uh, when he played the lone survivor. I mean Mark is just he's he's a he's part of our family. He's family. He's beyond just this guy who plays me. Uh, we're very very close today to this day, and I'm constantly giving him updates on the kids and he he follows them on Instagram and he knows what's going on. So we love, and Elizabeth Banks, you mentioned, she was so fun, just a really, just a ball of energy, it was so much fun to have on the set, and she and Janet got along great. If I showed you a picture of my wife, Janet, when she was coaching at 22, 23, and Elizabeth Banks back then, oh my God, they looked like twin sisters. And then Greg Kinnear just nailed her meal, absolutely nailed him. And he studied Dick. He went. He actually went down to Kansas City when Dick was coach for Meal was coaching in Kansas City, and he studied him, watched all his habits, and messed around with him. And he absolutely nailed it. I tell you, the casting 
and the job that uh, that that the um, that the casting director Mark Jard and Gordon Gray that that did the rookie did Miracle did the new guy did Secretariat, you know they have quite a pedigree with sports movies, man. And uh, the game plan with The Rock, you know, I mean that, that's that, that's that's the pedigree that our movie has, and it, then it's got that big Disney thing, you know, part of the Disney uh, Disney family, which is just remarkable to think that. Well, Elizabeth Banks, if you're watching. Uh, I, mean, I was like, man, listen, I mean, she never looked better till she played in that movie. I was well, like, she's, 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 she's got some great roles since then. So, yeah, pretty cool. He, you know, my kids were in the movie. And you was in the movie. Yeah, I was in it. See these, see these, uh, see these wardrobes behind me? Yeah, I caught yeah. you during the tryout scene. That's right. I'm clapping my hands. As, as my daughter Gabby says, I, my, it was my two seconds of fame. But you know, yeah. remember that scene where that little boy runs out in front of the car and yeah. picks up the football right after the Cowboys game? That's his uniform that he was wearing right over there. That, the was, the that, was, that was his outfit. My daughter Gabriella, is, uh, she was the quarterback. She's one that threw the ball in the streets. And Gabby now works for the Sixers, and Vinny had Vinny uh, signed with the Montreal Al West, and we're we're going to find out in the next day or two whether Canada is even going to have a season. So we're not sure. Yeah, we're going to actually get to that. Uh, yes. But I wanted to follow up. What what type of relationship did you have with your father in real life? It was it was an interesting and difficult relationship in the beginning because he was so demanding. He was a tough guy. Never got beyond the eighth grade. His first generation. His father came from Naples. He was he was brought up on a farm. A great athlete. Uh, one of nine. His father wasn't very loving. And and uh, you know my dad was pretty demanding. But he was my first coach. And uh, and 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 he really cared a lot about people. My mom was a great athlete. Uh, as well, and she was actually a professional baseball player. I have a picture right there of my mom when she was in 19. She was she had the Yankee pinstripes on. They played hardball up and down the East Coast with a male pitcher and catcher, and um, and and so I had, I come from a, an athletic background, but excuse me, Joe, there was a lot of stuff going. That was I just that was some garlic pizza that just uh, just came right up here. So. Uh, <laughs> I had to do that. So, um, you know, but there was stuff going on at home with my mom. My mom was one of nine. She's of English descent. And she, her, you know, things were rough. Uh, and then my mom and dad brought up, uh, you know, the Great Depression. My mom wound up with um, anxiety and, and depression. And I actually saw her being taken out of the house in a straitjacket uh, with a nervous breakdown. And she had a couple of nervous breakdowns, bedtime in mental hospital. And I'm not ashamed to say this. I mean, it's just part of what it was. And so, and when I'm 12 or 13 years old, man, I, 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 there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, my dad's just trying to survive. And um, and, and he knew I, he, he just, he, you know, he sort of, he had so much confidence in me that I would just sort of take care of myself. But, you know, I had those moments, uh, you know, but that's, see, we're all, we were all, we all grow up in this neighborhood where all the dads were sort of that way. You know, they were hardworking guys that worked on the river in Philly. And uh, my dad worked at Westinghouse. There was Sunship. There was Boeing Vertol. There was uh, Baldwin and Lima Hamilton. All, all kinds of all kinds of stuff. They were making things for for the World War II, and you know, and and, and that's where our dads worked. And our moms, they were back then. They called them housewives, domestic engineers, right? And uh, but we but, and we grew up with a little housing project. So all of us guys sort of had that same kind of a dad, not that real warm and fuzzy kind of let's pick you up and hug you kind of guy. Now, to me, I'm, I'm entirely different. You know, I, there's not a time, there's not a phone call, there's not a nothing where my son or daughter don't end that with a, those great three words, you know, I love you. And um, I didn't get that much as a kid. So, you know, you seek it somewhere else, and I was able to get it from my school teachers and coaches, and, and they became my surrogates. But I always was respecting my dad, understood what was going on. I uh, just wondering, I never really, never really said, you know, why me? It's just, okay, this is, this is what was given to me and this is, I'm going to deal with it. And, you know, I, I did it. it made, I think it just made me tough. You know, I was, I was a tough kid and, and I grew up tough and, you know, I, I was tiny, but I, 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 I survived. I took care of myself. I knew the streets pretty good. Well, I, I can understand where you come from. See, like in the, the rookie, you know, they portrayed, Jim's father being one way, and in real life, his father was another way. And in your situation, I was curious because he seemed like he was like one of your biggest cheerleaders in the movie. 
Yeah, well, he still was. Well, my dad, oh my, oh my God, my dad, Joe, my dad became my best friend, right? right. You know, actually, uh, actually, right after my dad became my best friend is is um, is when my first wife uh, walked out. You know, and 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 uh, <laughs> you know, we we had that we had that sort of come to Jesus meeting, and and then he was there, man. But he he was my biggest cheerleader. He he came to every game. He came to every track meet. And, uh, I, I, and my God, every time I'd go somewhere, the first person I'd look for would be my dad. And, and it's sort of funny because, uh, you know, with my son, Vinny, you know, when, when I, I, I never missed anything. I was so lucky that I never, ever missed any game or any event that my kids ever did be just because of the way um, my, my work was because I was in sales and marketing. So I, I made it that way. And, uh, you know, the, the first thing they would look, they'd look and they'd, they'd see me in the stands. I'd get that, that nod. And, and that's what that's what it was. It was all about with my dad. There's a great picture. I'm tugging on my face mask. And that's my way. That's that was my way of just saying to my dad, hey, I love you, dad. I'm, I'm, I'm OK. I'm, everything's cool. I see it. And, um, you know, we had that same thing going on. So, you know, uh, that's important. But but my dad was always there, always there. My biggest thing. My mom never saw me compete ever because she had whatever she had that, that social anxiety too and and just couldn't get out in crowds amongst strangers and um, you know when you, was, describe your dad, when you describe your dad it almost sounds like my dad my dad was one of those uh tough fathers growing up and I mean he you know he he was hardcore I mean you, you feared him hey, but, it is, yeah respect yeah, him too yeah oh yeah well it was more fear than respect <laughs> Uh, but you know, to, to give the devil his due, you know, right now, if I call my dad and I say, "Pops, I need X, Y, and Z," he may not want to give it to me, but he'll give it to me. I, I try not to abuse it, but that's the type of dad I have. You know, you know, if I need something, he's not gonna let his kids do it without. Yeah. Now he may complain about it the whole time. You, I told you, mother, but I know I can get it. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but I want to move on uh, to the trial. Uh, they had an open trial. What type of people were at this trial? Was it portrayed like that in the movie? Of just, like, just, just, like you, just like you saw in the movie. It was an open <laughs> tryout. I mean, you you had your never wases, your has-beens, and then you had some really top-shelf athletes, some pretty good athletes here, guys who could run, you know, and guys who could compete. But, uh, you know, and it wasn't really a publicity stunt. Dick was looking for that one guy because he had a mentor, and that was George Allen. And George Allen uh, had a, a free agent camp like that a few years prior, and uh, with, when he was with the Redskins, and uh, and you know he came, and he came out with Herb Mulkey, and so now here I come four years later, and he, he comes out with Vince Papelli, and um, it, you know it, 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 it wasn't fluke. Look, I worked work my butt off, and I, I led the team as I said in receptions and. Uh, they really liked my training program because uh, I, I trained a little bit different than everybody else. A lot of core training, which wasn't the way it was done back then. And I did a lot of interval training. And actually, the Eagles athletic trainers adopted my training program uh, for, for the team. So the next year, they sort of had to do what I did. <laughs> it was it was rough. Yeah, you know, the running that I did, the running program. But, you know, it, 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 it was all about stamina. You know, you had to, you had to survive those remote camps. So, um, yeah, what you saw was what you got. You know, there was about an hour, hour and a half out. They had just got us through all the drills. That was the big part. And, um, and they, they, you know, they found me, and I was the only guy, and it, and it worked out great. So uh, stepping into the NFL training camp for the first time, it, yeah. had, it, had, it, had, it had to be some of the, one of the toughest things you ever experienced. Oh, my God, it was insane. Man, you know, you're there, and then you're looking in the stands. You're getting up, and everything is so regimented. Boom, boom, boom! They, 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 you stay in, you stay in a dorm. At, at that time, it was Widener College, now Widener University in suburban Philadelphia. And training camp is training camp's only eight miles from my house, right? So, and so with training camp, I got my ex students, my, my guys I had played rough touch with, guys I played semi pro with, all the guys from Westinghouse, my dad, and everybody in the neighborhood. I was, you know, in my high school and college days, uh, you know, with with my track and some of the things I did in high school, I was pretty well known, you know. So. A little bit of a semi, I don't, I'm not saying celebrity, but I was sort of pretty, I was like, let's say, by the neighborhood. So as training camps started to go and, and, and the momentum started to go, there were more people coming uh, coming at camp. But, man, I'll tell you, we, we were double sessions. We were double sessions, uh, full pads, stud tempo. Uh, and, and then 
and then we would have we would have a walkthrough at night. Uh, it was it was rough. I, that first camp I went in at 198. I came out at 180, and um, it, it was it, it was pretty difficult. But you know, one thing I was in great shape, and and I and I ran and I ran and I ran, and there would be about 13 or 14, 15 wide receivers, and they were gassed all the time. And we get into these different drills. So after I get done running my route. And if I caught the ball, I'd sprint 50 yards downfield. All the people and the fans would go crazy because they're all my people, right? Most of them are from my neighborhood. And then Vermeil's turning around, and they're, they're screaming for me, and I flipped the ball back, you know. And I, that's, that was all for a purpose. I knew what I was doing. And then next thing you know, I'd go to the third or fourth guy in line. There'd be a line of about 12 or 13 guys. Hey, you mind if I jump in? <sighs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, Vince. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah man, thanks. And then I'd go in, and I'd be... Actually, because of my decathlon training, I'd be fresh as a daisy and boom, just go off again and do another one. And I'd get on film again. And then we would get in, we get in contact drills. And wide receivers weren't supposed to hit. I hit everything that was in a different color jersey. As long as the whistle didn't blow, I was hitting them. And then again, I'd pop up on film. And, uh, and then I'd get in those nutcracker drill. And the defensive back would come up. I said, nah, nah, I don't want a D-back. Give me a linebacker. Oh, boy, that, that really pissed him off. Dick Vermeil, Hall of Fame. Great coach. Yeah, so, he's a Hall of Fame to me. He gave me a chance of a lifetime, man. I'll tell you why. That, that's what it's all about. What is it like in real life? Oh, he's great. He's the greatest man in the world. He's always reaching out. He loves He loves my family. He's Vinny's he used to come to the games just to watch Vinny. Uh, we're always we're always talking. Uh, he's, he's really big into his wine. He's got a great wine. Anybody out there, Google it up for meal wine out of Napa Valley, Calistoga. It's absolutely the best wine ever. And he's just a nice man. He's a caring man. He's really intelligent, and uh, he, and he's a tremendous speaker, and gave me the opportunity of a lifetime. I, I, he's he's right up there, you know. And he's he's my he's my Mount Rushmore, along with my high school coach and and uh, my dad. All right, we, got, we only got a few questions left. I got to ask you, uh, in the movie, Danny Franks, mm -hmm. he was like your arch nemesis. He was your roommate. Uh, tell me a little story. Tell me about that scene with Danny Franks. Uh, was he really that much of an asshole? Or, or was that something that uh, the movie just... Well, we invented? both were. <laughs> we were both that, you know. Uh, no, he wasn't that. It is... He he was just trying to help me out. Here's the deal. See, they 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 needed that. They, they, look, you, you got to have your advocates. You have to have your adversaries. You know, Dennis actually right from the beginning, and I, we were best of friends. We started training together, and we became advocates because we were in a we were working the door one time, and a fight broke out. And here here we were back to back. You know, just slamming away. When we got jumped by about ten or twelve people. And uh, we got to, we got our butts whipped, and after it was all over, we looked at each other and gave each other a hug. And we didn't even at that point we were sort of adversaries. This is even before then. Then I wind up signing with the Eagles, and and then we started training together. So Dennis was always my guy in, in the movie. And uh, and so what I would do is uh, I actually had this little thing. I had I had this spy. I had this little birdie on. You know, everybody said I wish I could be the fly in the wall. Well, I had my fly in the wall. It was a wide, it was a wide receivers coach's son. I had this really cool Dotson uh, 260 ZT top that I used to let him drive around training camp. And in return, he would sneak in on the meetings and just sort of listen in to see what they were saying. And he would give me some tips on what, what I needed to do and where I stood on the depth chart. And he would and the same thing. So I got that tip from Den I got that tip from Timmy. And I passed it on to Denny that he, he had to do a little bit better on his weak side. And then he actually taught me about the knuckle thing, you know, because he was the center. And back in the day, see, wide receivers were always in a three-point stance. We don't we don't have that little pretty boy two-point stance that everybody's got, you know. And you just sort of look in and move. Yeah, man. Uh, so we're, we're not that guy. That's, it was a whole different ball game back then. And so you're looking, you're looking at their hands or you're looking at their feet. <laughs> I mean, you're in a three-point stance. It, it's tough to throw with a helmet on. It's tough to throw that head up there unless you, unless you're like a rubber man, you know. So. so, what was your relationship with the other players in the movie? They kind of make it seem like you wasn't. It was very tough. In, in the beginning, in the beginning, yeah, man. Some of those guys they hated my guts because I was I was wiping them out downfield, and I'm not saying not to do that, but that's that's what I was doing. I was trying to make my mark, but. There were guys on the team that I didn't know that were secretly rooting for me. 
but it's like sort of what's going on in politics right now sometimes. You don't want to tell who you're rooting for because you're afraid that somebody's going to make fun of you, right? Or you're going to get some crap because of it. So that, that's what, that's basically what, so these guys were just, they, because there were a few guys on the team that were a little bit mouthy, a little bit chirpy. And, and I, and I was, I was sort of, I was sort of taking care of them. I was sort of like their hit man. They didn't, I didn't even know what was going on. I'm like, like I said, I'm just trying to make an impact and show up good on film and, and, and do everything I can that people don't do. I did. Hey, my God, you see what he did. You know, that's why I wanted to coach. Did you see how he just did? Yeah, that's the way I wanted them to react. And, uh, so, but guess what? They were reacting. And after the Giants game and I made that big hit, on at the end of the game and you know and then we wound up winning the game i got invited to my first team party and 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 that was the greatest there i am all those guys were carmichael and bergy and 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 you know, roman gabriel you know and having a beer with them and then the next year uh there's both basically that same team voted me uh unanimously captain of the special teams so i won them over you know and i won them over not by not by doing this i won them over just by effort and making plays, you know, I, I made a lot of, I made a lot of, a lot of hits my, my rookie second year. And then they, they sort of, they, they got, they, they, they sort of double and triple teaming me, but that's okay. I guess I made my mark. I, was it weird that the fact that, uh, just a couple months prior to this, uh, you were cheering these guys on and now they're teammates. Yeah. Well, that was, it was really weird. That's a great question, Joe, because, when, when I went to training camp, I said, what was it like? The first the first week was all rookies, right? And I didn't know any of these guys. And they're, they're all, I'm an old man, right? I'm 30 years old. These kids are all 22, 23. Then the veterans come in, and I'm thinking, oh, my God. There's Bill Berge. He's like my idol. There's Roman Gabriel. There's this guy. There's that guy. Because none of them were training. at They they weren't really training as hard as I was in the, in the, uh, in the stadium in the offseason. They were established, you know? So, yeah. but... <laughs> And then they, they wound up becoming my best buds, and, and they're my best buds now. You know, it's, it's, it's like the coolest thing in the world. So, uh, Janet, this yeah. is fast, let's fast forward to uh, 93. You get married to the love of your life. Right. What, kind of, what kind of relationship you and Janet, you spoke on y'all best friends. Uh, what I'm trying to ask is, how does Janet inspire you? to be the person you are today she challenges me constantly she knows she knows she knows what buttons to push and uh and she she does it and she's she's a great button button pusher and but but you know what she's she inspires me because she never stops i mean she is the energized she's the energizer bunny and just constantly going and you know it's always we always go just one more janet you know she's always one one more and that's the way she was when she was growing up just well, come on janet you're done not just one one more rep just one more one more set whatever it was and uh she just never stops she's extremely intelligent very caring uh we, we bring she, we, we have so many, <laughs> I, our house is like the spca you know it's like the cruelty to anybody and we just we just bring them in and, uh, and and that's the way we are in our family. And as a result, with her work ethic and, and her compassion and empathy and sympathy for other people, that's the same thing that our children have right now. And she is absolutely my perfect, the perfect wife, the perfect partner, the, uh, the perfect everything. And uh, we just have a blast together. And, you know, and, and we still have our dreams. And uh, we have our dreams for our kids. We still have our dreams for each other. And I'm way beyond retirement age, but there's no way. She says, I'm not going to let you retire. She says, you'll get bored. You'll get old on me. She says, if you get old on me, I'm going to trade you in for a couple 30-year-olds, right? <laughs> so, but we, and we have that little thing going, so it's good. She looks like Elizabeth Banks, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm telling you, you just, you just Google up Janet Cantwell, uh, Janet Cantwell, a gymnast. You'll see. She was, she, was, she was right there with the big guys. Yeah, so uh, beating cancer. Uh, yeah, a lot of 19 know. years. Well, I don't brag about it. It happens when I get out and speak. I do my PSA. Uh, you know, I, I, they, um, I, right before Memorial Day. Matter of fact, I just uh, 
I just I just ran into a couple pictures. I was looking through some 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 stuff, and I saw, saw a couple pictures of, of back then in the day. And I, you know, she said take a colonoscopy, and you know, I took the colonoscopy. I always tell everybody that you know to take a shot at it. I see you never know what they find. And the last time they found my father's shoe up there, you know, so that's my joke. But you know, the thing is, is that we need you around. You take that you take that test, and and I took the uh, I, I took it. They found a cancerous polyp about the size of this ring. I ripped it out, and then uh, they, 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 like my the colon, you know, the colon's got five or six feet just wrapped around in your belly. So they took that rope, essentially, and they, whatever that, that, that was, they just, it was like resectioning a rope. And they did it laparoscopically, so there was no, uh, there was no incision. And it, it took a lot of time, but within uh, three or four weeks, I mean, three or four days, I was out of the hospital. And two weeks later, um, I'm riding my bike down the Jersey Shore. We call it the Shore, the, the Atlantic Ocean. One of the uh, one of the boardwalks and Jay Wright, who's my buddy, is the head coach at Villanova basketball. He says, "Vinny, Vinny, oh my God!" He said, "What, what are you doing? Did you just have cancer?" I said, "Yeah." So you know, a couple of weeks after, I'm riding my bike ten miles. So um, I it, so it, it happened, and and for me, it was a wake up call. Uh, my kids were young. I, I you know I, you go through that why me why me kind of thing, but I got no chemo, no radiation, and I'm a spokesperson still for colon rectal cancer awareness. Take that test. You never know what they'll find up there. So, me, they found cancer. Speaking of your son, uh, one hell of a college career. He's now playing in the Canadian Football League. Uh, how proud of you, uh, Vinny? How what? I said, how proud of you? Oh, how my God. Both, both my children. But both my children, I'm, I'm just so proud of them and, and what they've accomplished in their life. And, and Vinny, you, you mentioned hit, you know, we're waiting right now. You could any, any minute, any day, we could find out what's going to happen with the CFL. And every day seems to change even with the NFL. So we don't know what's going to do. But he's just a, he's a remarkable athlete and a really good kid. Very smart, hard, hard worker, just has a great work ethic. I, this morning. He pops up out after a set. I said, what was your workout today? He said, I ran, I ran 30 50s up a, up, up a hill. 30 50s. That was his workout. He's working out with a kid from Penn State. He's got, we have trainers and he, he actually was trained. Uh, he just trained six months down at Boca Raton with Tony, uh, t Tony, Van uh, uh, t Tony Vitale, uh, who trains a lot of NFL guys. And Vinny's been training with them, getting ready, you know, to go up to, uh, the camp and my daughter Gabriella, she does all the entertainment for the 76ers went to Syracuse so uh yeah Vinny had a great career uh, with great a tremendous lacrosse player and a good swimmer he could have gone d1 in, in two or three sports but um and you know the the thing is is that they they're respectful uh they're they're involved in the community and and very hard workers and just I, I, i'm just so lucky i can't imagine what my life would be without my children it's just a, you know, the greatest gift janet's ever given me so we're very close very close family well these are the last questions they're gonna be fast questions uh because right. i know you're a busy man you got uh you got a little arrangement going on tonight but i had okay, to ask yeah uh, i like to talk, i'll tell you about that i'm gonna i'm going into philadelphia and i'm gonna I'm going to hang out with some of my buddies from law enforcement, the FBI, and the Coast Guard. And uh, right now, these young men and women, uh, and, and they're out there sacrificing themselves and their lives. And I know there's a lot of stuff that's going on, but uh, they really care. They really care. And I've had the opportunity in the last 20 or 30 years to be with them, and they know that I support them. So tonight's, at, tonight's attitude and adjustment night right around by, right. Right around a, a really cool place in Philly, so that's where I'm heading. And the great thing, I'm going to be with a couple of my best buds. Plus, uh, Vinny's going to be hanging with me. So, and some law and some some military guys will be there as well. That's why I have my uh, that's why I got my my stripes on here. Well, that's one hell of a cause, and uh, I'm very very proud to speak to somebody that is going to support the police and the military. But I had to ask you, uh, Max's Bar and Grill is it still open? So it's open, man. They call it the tumble in right now. And actually, I was just uh, I was just talking to the owner uh, today, texting him because right behind this computer is a picture that I'm looking at that says Invincible '83. And uh, we're we're downsizing, and we're we're I'm I'm, I'm I'm giving some of my memorabilia away. And I asked the owner, Joe McGee. I said, Hey, Joe, you want that jersey? And he says, Man, oh man, thank you very much. So. Yeah, Max's is still there. I go there all the time. 
I go there all the time. It's in the neighborhood, right around the corner from not too far from the Philly airport. It's cool. It's a it's a great community bar. And so I love it there. Down in South Philly every once in a while. Well, it's right it's right on the outskirts of South Philadelphia, just right on the edge. Okay. But there's 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 a couple there's a couple, there's Chickies and Pete's and Rosewood Tavern. They're my two favorite places in Philly. So yeah, I've been known to pounce around a little bit. I I, I still have a good time, man. You know, <laughs> not right. last question, and I'll let you go. Uh, how hard was those playground football games y'all played back they in the tough. day? They were tough. I tell you, man, I played against guys like Gook Delicio, right, kicking Mamone, <laughs> and uh, some real characters. And they're these are guys right out of Central Casting. You know, they, they, they will warm up with a six pack and, a, you know, and, a, and, a, and whatever. <laughs> these, guys, these guys will breathe on you, man. You're running around again. You breathe on it. They breathe on you. Almost pass out. They always had they always had a cop and an EMT at every game because somebody would always wind up in a hospital and there'd always be a fight. <laughs> and then after the game was over, just like in the movie, we, everybody's got their arms around each other. And we wind up going to Max's or Benny's bar or wherever, whoever, whoever won. The, the loser had to come to our bar and, and, and buy the drinks, and that's the way it was. And it was a bar league, you know, and I played for a couple, three bars. I played not only for Max's, but Deacon Ale House, Cannon's Cafe, man. You know, I had it all covered. So, and my students knew one Friday it was study hall day because Thursday night was rough, was rough touch plus, you know, coming in at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> getting up and, and trying, to, trying to teach the next day just – don't make any noise. Don't make a sound. So, <laughs> it was, it was, Joe, it was so much fun, man. You can't do some of it. You can't get away with some of the stuff we did back then. And it was all fun, man. And, you know, everybody's getting so serious. It, it, I, I just long for those days. It's, it was wonderful. What a, what a great time and a great way to, to grow up. I have so many close friends still. We, we still laugh about some of the goofy stuff we did back then. But uh, it sounds to me you lived one hell of a life, and I think yeah, not too bad. I know regrets. Yeah, somebody, you know, I'm getting close to forty, and somebody, I was talking to someone, and he was like, "Is anything you regret?" And, and I look back, and I'm like, "Yeah, I regret this. I regret that." But you seem like somebody that is just like it's no regrets. That's you. You lit. You did exactly what you wanted to do with your life, and I. You know, I respect that. I, you're one hell of a man. Well, uh, I appreciate you know, that. One I, got, one, I have one regret. I have one regret. I have one regret. I wish I'd have met Janet. So I wish I'd have married Janet sooner. I, I, that, that's, I, I wish my kids could have been around when, when I was playing and gone through all that stuff. But, uh, hey, it is what it is now. That's the only regret. Okay, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, I mean, you got her now. So Yeah, that's it. it darn right, man. It took a lot of groveling. Whew, I wear knee pads there for a while. I was, I was, I was, I was almost begging. Come on, please. Is there anything that you like to plug? Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, actually, some of the guys are rolling into my house now, so I'm going to have to bail in a second. But uh, uh, you know, my website. If anybody, uh, if anybody needs me to come out and do a Zoom cast now, you know, VinceVincePower.com. And my daughter Gabriella, um, she, uh, she and I are going to do a podcast. It'll be coming out right around Labor Day. And it's uh, right when all the seasons are going to be going, and it's going to be called Gabbing with Invincible, every pun intended. And my daughter's name is Gabriella. So Gabbing with Invincible, every pun intended. So uh, she's going to take the, uh, the the millennial sort of, but she's, 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 she's pretty bright and she's been working with the pro teams. And me, I'm, I'm the older, I'm the old school retro guy. It's going to be fun. But we got some. We have some great guests lined up, uh, some tremendous, uh, tremendous well-named people that are going to join us. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to do that. But, Joe, man, this has been fun. I had a great time. I know you, uh, you, you know, you made you made the time work and, you, you know, and you were very persistent. And I appreciate that persistence. So, but it, it was fun. I had a good time, man. Thank you very much. This has been truly an honor. I thank you. Stay on live real fast. Everybody who's watching, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, Vince Day Online. Everybody else, catch you next time. Here at Carolyn's Treasures, you can design your own belt. I'll be with my favorite team. Roll Tide! We don't like Auburn around here, but if you do, we will make you one of our Auburn Championship belts. Ooh, yeah, this is heavy. <laughs>